We live in an era dominated by financial terrorists. Terrorists, terrorists, jihadis of banking. They're here to kill you and themselves. They don't care because they're trained at madrasas called Princeton, Harvard, and Yale. They believe in an ideology, not the Koran, but Adam Smith, that they completely misread and interpret as something to justify their blowing themselves up. And the cost of terrorism is cheap. 9-11 only costs $500,000. The ability to borrow money and take over a company by Warren Buffett is zero. He's borrowing money at zero. He's taking all those jobs away. He's creating economic destruction because he's a financial terrorist. And that's the era that we live in today. Why are we gonna stop it? There's only one way to stop it. Raise interest rates right now. Make the cost of terrorism too high. Do it today. If you don't, you're a fucking terrorist. Jenny Yellow's a terrorist. Mario Draghi's a terrorist. The Central Bank of Japan is a terrorist. These are the real terrorists. So let's get into it. Who is Max Kaiser? Many people know him as the father of Bitcoin maximalists. It's the only secure database that's ever been invented. No, that's you, the technology. You fail to understand no. that it's a new technology that is as profound as the printing press or the electric light bulb. For people who don't know what a Bitcoin maxi is, it's basically a person that believes that Bitcoin is and will be the only digital asset to ever be needed. Bitcoins are the <laughs> testicles of the universe. Jesus. They've got all the semen. But why and where did his love for digital assets start? Many people will think that it was in 2011 when he first discovered Bitcoin and started accumulating it for only $1 per coin. But this is not true at all. Kaiser was actually involved with digital money way before Bitcoin was even being developed. Joining us from Los Angeles tonight on the BizBuzz is Max Kaiser. He is the founder of the Hollywood Stock Exchange. Mr. Kaiser, welcome to CNN FM. Good evening. Good to have you here. We have pulled up on our website here a version, or at least your website, and we're going to click through it. And people can actually buy into the market with Hollywood money, not real dollars, correct? That's right. You go to hsx.com and we give you two million Hollywood dollars. But to understand this story, we need to go back in time. Back to the 1980s. During this time, Max Kaiser was working with the people he would go on to hate more than anything. He was working with traders on Wall Street. First, he worked at Payne Weber, an extremely clean, perfectly regulated, and transparent stockbroker. By the time you met my partner, my financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need some help. We need some help. You need Payne Weber behind you. No, we're just kidding. They're as dirty as every other stockbroker. Misleading clients, stealing money, and being involved in a few cases of investment fraud. Oh, yes. Thank you, Payne Weber. Kaiser also worked for Oppenheimer & Co., which, as you might imagine, was just as dirty or worse than Payne Weber. During his time at these stockbrokers, Max Kaiser became appalled by what these people and their partners were doing and left the industry with a deep resentment towards them. Up until this point, Kaiser's story is already pretty interesting, but now it gets really weird. In 1995, right at the start of the famous dot-com bubble, Kaiser saw the potential of the internet and decided that he had to be a part of this new booming sector. Tonight, the information superhighway and one of its main thoroughfares, an online network called Internet. With the help of Michael R. Burns, he created the Hollywood Stock Exchange, a web-based multiplayer game in which players use simulated money to buy and sell shares of actors, upcoming films, and film-related options. Here is where he had his first contact with digital currencies. Also interesting is that Kaiser created the underlying market maker technology for the exchange, the Virtual Specialist Technology, an automated prediction market engine that effectuates online economies to reflect trader knowledge and opinions. In basic terms, he created a virtual stock market for movies, and it almost worked exactly like the normal stock market we all know. But how did people trade on it? What money did they use? It turns out that in order to trade on this platform, people needed a digital currency called the Hollywood Dollar. 
And even though you couldn't do much with it but trade it on the Hollywood Exchange, users were able to buy items from the company's store, which made the exchange a fairly popular website. We have over 120,000 traders, and they buy and sell these uh, all day long all, all over the world. When and say that again, how many people are trading? Uh, we have 120,000 registered uh, traders at HSX in 100 different countries. This means that Max Kaiser actually invented and developed the first fully convertible virtual currency ever. And yes, that's why it says virtual currency inventor in his Twitter bio. Lucky or not, Kaiser and his partners managed to raise over $40 million for the project. It was right in the middle of the dot-com bubble, and money was practically being thrown at any good web-related company, so yeah, he was probably a bit lucky. At this time, Kaiser managed to make a very decent amount of money, and thus achieved one of his most important objectives, escaping the economic rat race. Now. Let's get to the weird part of the Hollywood Exchange story. In an extremely shady transaction, the exchange was sold to the financial services company, Cantor Fitzgerald. Why was this operation shady? Well, it turns out that whatever transaction took place transferred all of the voting rights to Cantor Fitzgerald, giving the people that invested in HSX absolutely nothing. This purchase was strongly opposed by Kaiser, who claimed that the financial company badly mistreated HSX shareholders. But just as life wanted it, HSX under Cantor Fitzgerald utterly failed and would be the cause for the only time celebrities and companies in Hollywood teamed up. After his time at HSX and another bad experience dealing with Wall Street, Kaiser got angry. And I mean furious. He created a hedge fund called Karma Bank, whose sole purpose was to profit from any decline in the equity value of companies that are susceptible to boycott from environmental groups. So what does this mean? Kaiser basically made a hedge fund that would short the stock of certain companies while these were involved in environmental or ethical controversies. This would result in a decline in the price of the company's stock, which, besides going out of business, is the worst thing that can happen to a big company. We could say that he wanted to attack big corporations where it hurt them the most, their stock price. But how did he do this? Karma Bank wasn't just the name of his hedge fund. He also created a website with the same name. And this website was something, well, let's call it special. What happens when someone has played the system, become a multimillionaire, and then turns his guns on the multinationals, vowing to hold them to ransom? Well, joining me now is Max Kaiser, the founder of the Karma Bank Website Index, who describes himself as a financial anarchist. Um, you believe, amongst other things, that even those people who have no money can change the world. What, what are you actually trying to say? I'm very dangerous, Charlie. Very dangerous. On karmabank.com, people were able to organize boycotts and protests against certain companies. But there was more to it. People could also vote on what company was hated the most. And the most hated ones would be selected as the targets for the next boycott. However, this wasn't all. Not even close. Kaiser also had a mechanism that would compare the number of hate votes from karmabank.com with stock market data that would let him know which company was most vulnerable to a boycott. These two data points would be known as the infamous Karma Bank Vulnerability Ratio and Vulnerability Index. Max Kaiser took all of his hate towards big corporations, used it to invent a completely new financial weapon, and went on to wage all-out financial warfare against them. But did this even work? Oh boy. It did. At the end of 2004, Coca-Cola was involved in a major human rights controversy. It was exposed that they had been working with a paramilitary group known as the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia. Coca-Cola had been paying them to take out labor union leaders who were trying to organize and better the working conditions at the Colombian Coca-Cola plants. It was revealed that Coca-Cola was involved in the deaths of at least 10 labor union leaders and the death of several workers that refused to work under miserable conditions. 
Coca-Cola had literally been funding narco-trafficking, kidnapping, and guerrilla warfare. The Coca-Cola workers told me harrowing tales, uh, tales of being beaten up, tales of being arrested and charged falsely, uh, tales of having their families and themselves kidnapped uh, by paramilitaries that were working in conjunction, or according to their allegations, in conjunction with uh, Coca-Cola managers, plant managers. And Karma Bank decided to take full advantage of this. Kaiser and his partners began to short the Coca-Cola stock and spread the word about the scandal, organizing a coordinated boycott that saw the price of Coca-Cola shares drop 20%. Kaiser had finally achieved what most activists can only dream of, and in the coming years went on to financially attack other companies such as Microsoft, Ryanair, and even the fast food chain McDonald's. Uh, follow me and Mr. Hamburger and, and Mayor McCheese. Okay, it's one big fun game. But now when we're talking about the stock price, you say nothing. And what did Karma Bank do with the money they gained from their successful shorts? It may or may not surprise you, but most of it was simply used to fund even more boycotts. However, what many people don't know is that the rest of the money was donated to good causes, mostly to the victims of these big corporations. The hedge fund and Kaiser did not take that much money for themselves. Kaiser and his partners didn't want the money. They were just looking to damage megacorps, and that's all they really cared about. After waging all-out financial war against megacorps, Kaiser went on to host the Kaiser Report. This is the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser. Markets, finance, scandal. He discussed the wrongdoings of the big corporations. I call peekaboo accounting. This was the same thing at Lehman Brothers, and it's used all over Wall Street, all over the world. When the regulators come in to record your end of the quarter liabilities, you simply move it off your balance sheet for a few days with the complicity of another corrupt hedge fund or broker or banker. And then when the regulators move on to the next company, you move it back onto your balance sheet as a reciprocal arrangement with the other corrupt bank or broker or corporation. All corporations do this. General Electric does this. IBM does this. Warren Buffett does this. All the firms on Wall Street do this. They all engage in accounting fraud, peekaboo accountings. And if MF Global was caught right as they were in the process of committing accounting fraud, and suddenly that unraveled. The uh, little string was pulled and suddenly went bankrupt. But you could do the exact same thing at almost every single company in America. They're all basically based on accounting fraud. You pull the little string and they all go to zero. And talked about unorthodox economic theories. Upon us. I mean, this is what I call interest rate apartheid in America. If you're below the interest rate apartheid line, then if you go to the bank and you say, lend me $10,000, they would then uh, give you this money at in a cost of uh, eight, nine, ten percent. You know, if it's a payday loan, it could be 20 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent interest rates. If you're above the interest rate apartheid wall, then you go to the bank and you say, I'd like to borrow a billion dollars. And the bank effectively loans you that billion dollars at zero percent interest. And it's a, a non, uh, it's, it's a forgivable loan. In other words, you never have to pay it back. And that's, that's not an exaggeration. Um, if you have a certain place in society, if you're entitled in this society, you live in the right area, not on the Bantustan of the middle class, you can get uh, forgivable loans for almost any amount at 0% interest rate. And that's the financialization. So when the bank makes that billion dollar loan, it's not coming from deposits in the bank. They simply create a entry in their, in their computer system and they say, okay, now this billion dollars, it now has been created, it, it, this exists. It never has to be paid back and... And occasionally got into fights with his guests. You know, this is, this is... Uh, hey, you want to fight with me? No, we, no, I'm happy fight. to fight with you if you want to go in the ring. Hey, come over here I've been that. in the ring. Come over here and say you that. Come over come there. Come over here and say come that. Over here. No, you come over here. Come on. You, you, you make the first move, buddy. No, make, the make the first move. move. Come on, get you up. Make, make, the make the first move. It's my show. Make the first move. Yeah, get up. Get up off your oh, butt. You no, go ahead. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Yeah, I'll... Come on. 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 Come
Don't you understand? Oh, Jesus Christ! Get out of my show! Get out of my show! Get off the set! You know what? You know what? Get off the set! Keep this show. Get out of here! Stick the show right where it is. During the 151st episode of this show, he invited the economist John Matonis to be a guest. Together, they talked about Bitcoin, explained what it was, and how it could potentially change the world. I will tell you this, um, if BitTorrents were destructible, wouldn't the copyright regimes already have shut those down? I, I believe digital cash will do to legal tender what BitTorrents did to copyrights. Thanks to his previous life experiences, he knew that an anonymous, totally secure, decentralized, and community-driven currency would most likely be the future. Right here, watching history be made, Bitcoin is now up to $111. Bitcoin, $1,000! $5,000 a coin. The value of a Bitcoin jumping to almost, very briefly, 20000 this week. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Dude, we just got it. We just hit 30 k Bitcoin prices, Tom Lee, now back hitting 40000 Bitcoin, it broke through the $50,000 level just a short time ago. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Bitcoins. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. To make it even better, Bitcoin was the best way to combat the staggering inflation of the U.S. dollar that, in his opinion, will soon be totally worthless because dollars are being printed at an unprecedented rate. Okay, here's a $10 bill. This is garbage. This is garbage. Your people in South Africa, you have your RAND, right? That's going to zero. That's going to zero. This is going to zero too. Euros are going to zero. The yen's going to zero. The Chinese currency is going to zero. It's all going to zero against Bitcoin. He started to accumulate his Bitcoins when they were only worth about $1. As of now, Bitcoin is worth $40,000 and was at an all-time high of an unbelievable $63,000. Once more, Kaiser showed that he had an understanding of the markets that only a few have. He knew it would be the best investment ever, and with the help of his crypto-focused hedge funds such as Bitcoin Capital and Heisenberg Capital, he has now turned his investments into over one billion US dollars. After witnessing the dirty side of Wall Street, and after he spent years exposing the dark side of the financial world while helping the victims of it, he was rewarded with wealth that is only shared by around 2,000 other people on this planet. And even though many people dislike him for being as passionate about the digital asset as he is, Kaiser, just like Michael Saylor, is undoubtedly one of the people that made Bitcoin as popular as it is today. He may be a really controversial figure, However, there is no doubt that he is one of the very few people that are actually fighting for the well-being of others and against the greed of big corporations. I hope you enjoyed this video about Max Kaiser, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more awesome documentaries. Video narrated by Eric Peabody.